Hello, friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you to everyone for joining today. We have a very exciting um, updates here from many folks in the ecosystem. So I want to be as efficient as possible. Um, let me just share my screen really quick so I can dive right on into the presentation. How's everyone doing today? Hopefully swell. Everyone see my screen. Okay, there we go. Amazing. All right, so again, welcome to community call number 10, my friends. Thank you for coming. It really does mean a lot to me and the team that you guys show up. And again, these calls are for you. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're testing out a new platform today here. I wanna hear all the feedback, both from the speakers and our audience members. Um, we're trying something a little fun with this, but again, if it doesn't work or if you have bugs or things are difficult, do let me know. And yes, this is an open forum. Okay, quick overview today on the agenda. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of updates. I will be giving off some quick community updates where we've been, where you can find us again. Isla will be giving a quick uh, overview on grants updates. Um, we got some exciting news from that too. Covering a quick demo from Safe Wallet, um, Manu from our wallet team, and then um, the Redefine folks. We have some also exciting tooling there um, for builders and for users um, that I think really, really can help um, you keep your transaction safe whenever you want, want pun intended, whenever you are <laughs> initiating or, or doing transactions within your wallet or your treasury. Andre will be giving a safe DAO governance updates. And then we have a really important um, update for our ecosystem spotlight from Tarun um, at CoinShift. Um, yes, and then I dare not forget Jesse from Redefine. So a lot of amazing, very smart folks here on the platform today. Without further ado, um, where we have been, my friends, um, we were at East Barcelona last week. Um, it was a really great crowd. Um, if you weren't there, you can check out some folks who were building on us. Um, we sponsored uh, 5K worth of bounties. Um, essentially people building and testing our safe core stack. So if you want to go check out their projects, you can go to the link tree um, and see what people were building. Get inspired if you're going to come and hack with us at eGlobal Paris or hack in the future. But um, really check out these projects. The NFT address options one was actually really slick. They were all really smart. Um, and yeah, get inspired for, for building. Um, where you can find us soon is ETHCC and ETH Global Paris. Um, if you're hacking, there are two events here that we will be hosting if you are here, um, if you're a guardian or if you um, want to network with our really awesome, wicked smart folks from the Infra team, come find us there. Again, RSVP in the link tree below, or I have a QR code also for the safe community where you can uh, RSVP at the end. Another really cool announcement is that SafeCore and Monarium did a launch. So now you can have a Euro IBAN um, tied to your Safe account. Uh, if you want to read more details, go to our blog on mirror.xyz. Um, or again, there's a link to the blog post also in the link tree. And now, let me see, is Isla here? Isla, 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 to give the grants overview. Let me see. Isla, are you here? If so, please let me bear with me, folks. All righty. Okay. Well, um, I'm happy to do a quick overview, and then if she jumps on soon, I can hand the mic over to her. But we have some newly elected um, reviewers who are in the process of... of doing formal onboarding right now, but we have the technical seat who was won by Sokai. Um, we'll give again, like the formal names and announcements um, once uh, the onboarding is done. But yeah, just wanted to share with the community these really exciting announcements. We have Adam Hurwitz, again, follow these amazing uh, you know, folks on Twitter, insanely smart. I mean, we're so excited to have them on um, the Safe Grants team for helping us review. And then the wildcard seat goes to SM underscore judge. So again, give them a follow, give them support, and then mark your calendars for July 21st as we, grant, we announce the grants evaluation scorecard. So this will be, um, you know, a transparent forum for where you could see how we are evaluating grants coming up. Um, we'll gather our inputs from our new elected reviewers. 
Um, and then July 27th, mark your calendars for the grants applications because they will be opening. So stay tuned and follow us on Twitter, um, on the forum as well. If you want to hear more like detailed updates, get a hold of us on the forum, being Isla or myself, if you want more details or any of the other team members. Um, but yeah, congrats to our folks who won and put in all the hard work and um, congrats to everyone else who has been supporting and actually took the time to vote. We appreciate it. And also don't forget these events or else this raccoon will steal your phone. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, all right. We're going to do some well, updates from the safe wallet folks. A quick um, thing I wanted to share on behalf of Johannes, our PM for safe wallet is we're looking for feedback. Um, so we are launching this feedback forum here. Feel free to take um, a shot of the QR code. It's a very bare bones feedback forum. But again, we want to hear it all. Your thoughts, your comments, um, grievances, if any, for Safe Wallet um, here. And really um, appreciate you taking the time to share your feedback, your thoughts, and your comments, and your questions. Um, so there's that. And I will now hand it over to Manu, my colleague, and also um, Jesse from the Redefine team. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second. And the floor is yours, Manu and Jesse. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here to present to you our new feature. It's already live. You saw it. Some of you probably already saw it. Uh, I want to do a quick live demo and say a few words, and then Jesse will take over and talk about the specifics on the Redefine side of this integration. Um, let me share my screen. Yeah, this one. Okay, so let's let's start off with some infamous examples of what happened in the past. Um, like this is a, a drop, uh, not a drop. This is in a safe app to do like a, a batch transfer, and here we have an example batch transfer and load it into the app, and now we see about twenty transfers. Most of them transfer only one uh, of some specific tokens. We can also look here and we see, okay, there's some DAI being transferred and some SOS tokens, and we submit this. So now we're in the transfer model. We see all the individual transactions listed. It's a bunch. So back then, before we had our new feature, which uh, is live, we like a lot of users already tried to check each of these actions by hand, or they just trusted that it's all good. Um, and also, if you try to check them to see kind of the raw data, so it's a bit hard to see how much is this actually? Is this like one or is this 100 of this token? So um, the new change is that we see the ex uh, expected balance changes of this transfer. And here we see, okay, it's five die that's expected. But then we see 1,012 SOS tokens are being transferred. And we just expected like small amounts. And then we can see that somewhere in here, someone sneaked in a line we can, um, with like a huge transfer, like for instance, like, so this is like an easy indicator to see the sum of all transferred ERC20 and native tokens and also NFTs. Like here we also saw two NFTs being transferred out of the safe. Um, like for instance, if you now double check in this app, we see that the last line, which was hidden because it's a 20 row, transfers 1000 of these tokens. Like this is something that's happened to the people DAO in the past. They didn't see a line which got injected into their uh, Google Doc. So this would now uh, be easy to be detected. And another example of like a malicious trend, um, transaction uh, is here. It's, um, it's a demo app which shows some uh, real hacks that appeared. This is from the Seller Bridge um, an approval hack. And if we execute this, like we're connected with our wallet connect to this app, but it would execute the actual um, approval phishing attack. And now we see here in this section, um, this new scan for risk block. And here we see, oh, there's critical issues and a new checkbox where you can confirm that you really want to proceed. And on the right side, we see what are these issues. And there we can see that the spender address of this approval call is blocked by a global list and some other critical warnings. Um, and also important, if you want to still submit this transaction, you would have to now double check this box. I won't submit it, but um, it's kind of an extra security step for critical and high risk transactions so that users don't get fished so easily and, and have to actually confirm that they accept this risk. 
And now I will, there's also a link to the redefine full report. Like it's a, a dashboard by redefine and I will give it over to Jesse to explain what you see here. If it hopefully loads now. Thanks, Manu. Um, yeah, for, first of all, it's so it's been so amazing working with Safe and just seeing how much um, care and attention goes towards like protecting your customers and uh, allowing additional transparency and really enabling um, Safe users to uh, be able to make fully informed decisions when when signing their transactions. Um, and yeah, so basically what, what we do on the back end, all the safe transactions that are initially uh, the signatures directed to the vaults, we kind of unwrap those to understand what the external communication is, what protocols being spoken to, what uh, contracts are being interacted with. And um, we then look at essentially what the impact will be for the user. So we know that, you know, there are so many different attack vectors today and different ways that uh, bad actors can try and compromise users' assets, whether it's front-end attacks, whether it's, you know, compromising protocols at the core, um, and really being able to identify how that impacts the user and letting them make the decision if these are risks that they're willing to take on or not. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not just checking the contract you're interacting with against a, a blacklist, although that is something that is done to, to make sure that uh, even very new attacks are identified, but we're looking at things in a, a very dynamic way. So, you know, the functions that you're calling, the arguments that you're passing, all of the related entities. I mean, you could be doing a swap in a liquidity pool and there could be 20, 25 different entities that we need to look at. All of the, the owners, admins, um, initiators, looking at uh, implementation contracts, et cetera. So just making sure that users are able to understand exactly what is going on in the transaction and kind of giving the power back to them. Um, that's, that's really important to us and just making sure informed decisions can be made. Um, and just a shout out to the SAFE team for having such a, a really good vision around uh, user security. So we're really excited about this. As mentioned at the beginning, you know, any feedback on this kind of stuff is great. We're, we're all on the same team trying to make uh, the space safer for everyone. Um, so yeah, looking to improve and, and thanks for the time on this. Thank you very much. And with, with these words, back to you, Lorne. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm like really excited to see something like this um, implemented into Web3. Like, I don't know if you've ever done used Revolut or any of the other like payment, but like Web2, Revolut will like flag something if it looks shady or scammy. And so it's finally exciting to see something like that here, um, especially in the Web3 and safe ecosystem. Amazing. Now I will hand it over. Oops, let me get back to screen share mode. Bear with me, folks. Also, if you have questions, um, you'll see in the right hand um, tab, there's a question, a Q&A. Feel free to click that and uh, keep all your questions there. I'll be sure to um, vet them and ask um, once our presenters are um, done speaking. We also have a Q&A portion at the end, but again, if your question is It looks like Lorne may be disconnected, so I'll take over from here. Um, sorry about that, folks. Um, so now we're going to move on to talk about the safe DAO. I'm going to hand over to Andre. Just a second. Share screen. Entire window. Here we go. Andrew, please confirm if you can see the coming screen. Yes. All right. Coming up. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Just some updates on Safe DAO, a little recap, maybe also what we have talked about in the last community call. So, a few weeks ago, we la launched our governance hub. Um, we've already included some new things based on your feedback. For instance, we also have a part about uh, where you can find all these community calls. 
that has been included in the governance hub. And if you have any other feedback, please share that with us, um, either on the forum, under the thread, or via DM, um, or in the Telegram group that we have. Um, so we'd love to hear your feedback on the governance hub and anything we can improve to make it easier to understand how governance and operations work within SafeDAO. Next slide is just a reminder that uh, we're still doing the SafeDAO improvement survey. We got uh, quite some uh, answers to that and responses, which I will shortly go over um, after this, after these next two slides. But yeah, um, this is the short link SafeDAO survey um, 06 for June 23. Um, yeah, it would be great to get some more answers on that for, so we can use that feedback and work on it. Next slide is um, we're still we're, we're doing um, safe out chats, which means like one on one calls. Um, we had quite some people who booked them. It was really nice hearing a one on one call what people uh, like to have improved, what their vision is of safe DAO. Um, it's always like really enjoyable and super constructive. So yeah, please uh, choose that um, opportunity. And um, yeah, if you don't find a slot, uh, you can also reach out to me directly. Next slide, I think, yes, are going to be some results from the survey and from the one-on-one -on -one calls. And um, just high level summary of that. Um, most feedback went towards, uh, not surprisingly, towards the execution of the proposal. So clearer one and faster. Um, that is something that we also want to work together with in general as a sort of post-mortem, um, because um, the reason that some proposals have been, haven't been executed, have been executed later, um, tie very into um, the Safe Ecosystem Foundation, their role in it, um, Safe DAO, um, signaling certain decisions to the Safe Ecosystem Foundation. So we're taking this feedback that already went into the governance framework that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but also to have a proper post-mortem and to dive a little bit deeper for those interested, how we can make execution more transparent and more efficient in the future. Second one, second point is enhancing, sorry, just one slide oh, back. Sorry. No worries. Uh, it is enhancing transparency and communication, um, which also goes together with more ways to get involved, more bottom-up approach. Um, we heard that uh, people enjoy these community calls, but they also like to have a more of everybody on the same stage. And we kicked that off yesterday, for instance, with a first call around the governance framework, which was really nice to have everybody join in and push forward the discussion. We'll do more of these formats. And yeah, which also goes into to the last point, more active involvement in community calls. Uh, yeah, which also these give feedback to the new tooling and um, how we can make these more interactive. All right. Next slide, exactly. So we have a new proposal in phase zero that was co-authored by Christoph and myself. Um, we pushed it into the earliest stage, so phase zero as discussion stage. Um, the governance framework and the ratification of the governance framework is one of the milestones of SCP-3, which is uh, one of the prerequisites to vote on the transferability of the SAFE token again. And what we did is we took kind of like the feedback that we got that 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 was already gathered on the forum in the threads before when it came to a like to, towards a governance framework, the feedback we got from the calls, from the surveys, and we condensated it and tried to make a first draft um, displaying all of that. And the main objectives are to map all the stakeholders that are involved in SafeDAO, the rights and responsibilities, how to join them, um, how to exit these stakeholder groups, the intersection of Safe Ecosystem Foundation and SafeDAO when it comes to the administration and implementation part, making clear what is currently the scope of governance of SafeDAO, what doesn't fall under the governance of SafeDAO, what will fall under it in the future. We proposed a dynamic governance system, so a governance that changes over time knowing that we will not be able to get the best governance right away, but this is an iterative project that should come with um, its failing forward, let's say. So with a review period, with um, a measurable review to, to change governance over time. 
And so we we proposed uh, a POC seasons with different sprints, and which also leads to streamlining of the proposal process. Um, just that is a high level overview. Um, next slide, uh, we're talking about uh, that right now is the perfect time to get involved, contribute, and getting feedback. And there's various ways to do that. One is the more traditional way. Uh, you can go to the forum, you can um, post underneath it and quote certain parts of the governance framework and let us know your thoughts. Um, what we also tried out and what works pretty well, I think so far is publishing it as a Google doc and have people use the comment and suggestion function and they can add it into it. Um, so also this, this Google doc you will find in the forum post and we scheduled two governance calls specifically just for the governance framework. One of them we had yesterday, which we had over 10 contributors, I think, and very open discussions. And we're just taking the feedback of that and looking how to implement it. And another one of that is uh, tomorrow. It's going to be hosted on Discord. And uh, thanks, Lonnie, for sharing the, the, the link in here. Just click on the bell there that you're interested in. You can also add it. To your calendar by clicking on the three dots uh, that give you more actions. Yeah. So next step for that is gather and implement feedback, and then to move to phase one once we're done with that. Next slide is update on proposals that are currently being executed. So especially SCP five, which is just as a reminder, the rest redistribution of those tokens that were unredeemed from the first airdrop that. 50% of the allocation go to those pro rata that have redeemed it. The other 50% are up for, for another SCP. Um, the status quo on this is we've been working internally in the foundation and with the core contributors on a date when the redemption period is expected to start. That will be the 27th of July. That also has been announced on the forum. We did have, the proposal did have a hard deadline in it, which um, was, I think, the 1st of uh, July. Um, we, from the Safe Ecos Foundation, um, thought it's the best thing to reinterpret this deadline to not a hard deadline, but to a time period. So it took exactly the same time period between the snapshot vote and the 1st of July, which was 94 days, and applied it now as three months after the redemption period starts which effectively moves it to October 27th. Um, so that allows us not to not needing to have another vote, and another proposal, but we can actually actually ex execute this proposal with other, without any change. Um, next step for that is um, giving updates along the way and for the updates when we're going closer to the start date, but um, all of that is on track. And Yes, uh, and Loni had already talked about it. We have uh, events at ECC, especially we have a safe DAO event we call Guardians Gather. It's not only for Guardians, it's also for all safe DAO participants. Um, so if you are at ECC in Paris, um, I would love for you to, to, to join. It's on the 17th of July on Monday at 6 p.m. with a beautiful rooftop and um, definitely have enough time to chat and to get to know each other. And just wrapping up, as always, um, follow us on Safe Governance on Twitter. Um, there's the Governance channel on Discord. There's the forum, and there's notification on Snapshot. And yeah, handing it over to the next section. Right, awesome. Upcoming, we have an ecosystem spotlight. I can't really see if uh, Lauren is back or not, so I'll just keep going. Um, we have Coin Shift here. We have Tarun Gupta with us, who is going to talk about Coin Shift. Um, which is a treasury management solution for DAOs. Um, I need to let him share the screen. Tarun, Tarun how, is it, how are you doing? All good, all good. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. I'm pretty excited. To be honest, like two years ago when, you know, this idea of getting into safe DAO and becoming like a safe DAO, it was like a idea and how, how it went over the last two years. It is so amazing to see like what are the pro what is the progress and I'm so happy to be a part of this ecosystem alongside Point Chef. So let me share my screen. OK, 
can see my screen, right? Yes, we see yeah. the entire screen. So yeah, hey everyone, I'm Tarun, founder and CEO of CoinShift. We are simplifying treasury management for DAOs and organization. Our vision is to become like the de facto choice for real time actionable treasury management and really empowering organizations to control their financial health. And what does it mean? I'll, I'll show you. So today we want to sort of dig deep into like how we want to reshape the financial reporting for all these Web3 organizations and DAOs. And there are three sort of main pillars CoinShift had built so far in terms of financial reporting. So the first one is like portfolio history, as name suggests, you can go back to history and say, see exactly what's going on with your portfolio in Jan 2021, right? And then with the full auditable, complete, accurate data, and it is available for ERC20 tokens across seven chains. And then we have live portfolio across like your entire chains and safes. Uh, and then you can literally see your entire NFT portfolio. So the main play for us is like to how to help these finance teams to actually, you know, uh, help in the financial reporting, the portfolio history, live portfolio. And then we have cash flow reporting where we actually have, you know, give you like all the cash flow details, what's going on quarter by quarter, right? So these are like similar things we have seen in the Web2 tooling for all business banking apps like Bricks and all these neo banks. But uh, I, in Web3, we don't have this sophisticated tooling for these finance teams. So here you can see, you can just, this is a concept V2 dashboard. You can just go to reports. You can just choose the range and you're already imported your, you know, N number of safes across seven chains we support. So you can just press like a button, create report. And once you click into that, basically you, you can clearly see, you can clearly see like, you know, there is an entire history in USD terms. You can see, oh yeah. So you can see like your balance, you know, from the last year, very, very easily. USD is still easy, but the main thing is like token balances. So you can exactly see these are the tokens we hold across all our treasury accounts. And, and what is the USD pricing at that date? And we have like a five minute granularity kind of engine to really do this well. So we really want to help these finance teams to, you know, have like one step closer to their month end closing. And uh, you can just come to CoinShift and click one click. You just get that report and download it. And then you don't need to, you know, go through the Oracle prices and cross match it in your Excel sheets. So it's very, very simple and easy. Then we have live portfolio. So here we aggregated your entire balance. We we are categorizing some stable coins and ETH and BTC. Tomorrow we want to give like, you know, even you can categorize, right? So you want to have native token categorizations. You can clearly see what's going on in tokens view and different accounts view and multiple sort of very sophisticated like portfolio engine. And then same for NFTs. Uh, you can just see like your entire tree. So by, by tracking NFTs, what we want to enable is today, like, you know, still a lot of organizations actually don't hold NFTs in, uh, basically safe. So I think if we, you know, help them really, uh, have their financial reporting very, very well, more and more organizations will be more comfortable in, in storing NFTs in, in, uh, in, in safes basically. So then we have cash flow. So this feature is uh, still on stage, but it is going live very, very soon. And you can see like your, uh, you know, entire cash flow statements and all that. So you have incoming, outgoing, uh, you can see quarter by quarter, you can see by month, and you can have like incoming, outgoing by tokens. You can have basically label-based sort of reporting. Okay, which category you are spending the most in the last year, you can clearly, clearly see uh, and even all the uncategorized transactions will also show you so that you can categorize easily. So how, how it actually works and what we have done under the hood, right? So one of the main value proposition of CoinShift is like 
we have built our own infrastructure layer on top of custody layer and custody layer is basically where the assets are stored which is safe and we don't touch the assets we are just secured by safe so we're using a smart contract layer but entire off-chain layer is built by Coinshare and it has its own pricing engine it has its own transaction engine which is independent to safe apis and once you have this flexibility you can provide like a much superior experience on the application layer where this ag aggregation layer you know really works pretty well right and we are coming up with the data compliance very very soon what does it mean and like because coinshift has off-chain data as well which has a lot of context of the transaction so we need to be compliant and and uh you know so that like you don't need to worry about uh anything so then then we can dig deep okay like you know after infrastructure we have like this operational layer where actually you do your payouts your reimbursements your any kind of payments your payroll right but the main thing we have in this layer is like actually our data layer and what is this data layer? let's let's dig deep more into that so in this data layer as mentioned like there is an off chain data which is like you know the context of the transactions or maybe you know you have certain departments in your organization and and engineering and others right and then you have basically on chain data right once you combine this uh, data then you have like in this data where you can just show okay like this person got paid this much money right but this is like one part of clarity of making like this in this data layer but the next big thing for coinshift is to transform this into the financial data right how do you really you know, build your balance sheet super simply through this data layer. And Coinshirt is like working super hard to really build this very well. Because end of the day, for any finance team today, the actual main ledger is lies in the in the QuickBooks or the Net Suites of the world because you come want to combine your fiat treasury and crypto treasury. And accounting only happens in Web2. There is no accounting happens in Web3. So this data layer has a lot of value. And what we really want is to eliminate that entire need of consolidation and all that and by default we produce this data layer in a way where it just syncs with your accounting integration and the main reason to do that is definitely helping the current organizations but imagine any web2 organization tomorrow want to take revenue in safe right so with this data layer by using coinshare it'll be they'll be compliant by default because they already use netsuite and, and quickbooks so this is where we want to go with this financial reporting. So we we are lucky enough to you know have incredible traction over the last two years, and all the operations like majorly Coinshift is being used for. Uh, we have processed over like two hundred million dollars, ten thousand plus safes connected, and six thousand plus like you know contribute contributors actively paid through Coinshift. And these are like you know some of the reviews from our users. So per Winstead app, uh, Uma, th th these are the users who helped us, you know, shaping the future of financial reporting. So we are we're so lucky to have all of them. So yeah, thank you. Uh, do reach out at coinshap.xyz or, or, or on Twitter or, or to me. Uh, yeah. Any questions? We'd love to answer. I see we have a question from the audience in the Q&A channel. Just a reminder, if you have Q&As, just pop them in the Q&A chat channel on the right, little question mark. We have a question for you, Tarun, um, from Adam. Do you plan on developing the historical reports into accounting and tax reports, e.g. generating 8949 US tax forms? Yeah, so uh, our idea is basically like how we can build this accounting ready data, and it is actually like, basically in a way where because the entities are registered in certain jurisdiction right so end of the day we really want to be produce that data to plug in into those softwares which do these kind of things so for example can we generate a data format which can be pluggable to tax bit right so, so this is what we want to do perfect all right um anybody else have questions for Taryn and the coin shift team Feel free to raise your hand or pop a question in. Adam says, thank you. Thank you, Adam, for posing the question. Let's see. Any folks, don't be shy. 
I will also go on to open stage mode. So if you have a question, just feel free to unmute. Um, all right. I I have one actually. I wanted oh, really? to know a bit like how does how does the how does CoinShift use the safe functionalities, right? Like how does it, it relate to safe and and how did you use it to build it? Yeah. So as uh, there is a custody layer, like the bottom layer, right in the diagram if you see. So what does it mean as like, actually you you hold your treasury assets on safe as, as multisig, right? As an organization. So we are, our infrastructure layer directly interacts with the safe contracts in the same state. So today, if you use safe UI, you can import the same safe account in CoinShift and you have like all these superpowers to your safe. So think of it as like your storage layer is still safe because it is composable and it's on Ethereum and blockchain, right? You can just build like superpowers to it. So yeah, so under the hood, everything is on top of safe. Cool, thank you. Great question, Danilo. And for those that don't know Danilo, Danilo he's our PMM, amazing team member. Yeah, sorry, I didn't introduce myself because I jumped in and wanted to keep the call. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. My computer Hi, nice did, so sorry everybody. about that. <laughs> Um, Taryn, where can we find info about you? Let's say if I'm a builder or a web two CFO, that's like super curious about onboarding. Um, where's the best to reach out and to get in touch with you folks? Yeah, definitely. You can DM me at Tarun Gupta one, four, seven, five. I'll just mention here as well, Sweet. but overall, uh, like you can just go to website, uh, apply for the wait list and we'll prioritize the, uh, and it's under like private access right now. But uh, we want to like make it available as much as possible. Amazing, perfect. Any final questions? The next phase of the community call will just be general Q and A. So I'll open that up here in a second. Perfect. Thanks for sharing that info. Hold on. Let me do a quick go back here, folks. Move down. All right. Uh, here we go. Again, Q&A time. So if anyone has any questions um, for any of the other panelists or for Tarun and the CoinShift folks, feel free to pop them in here. Also, you can go to the link tree or QR code to register for any of the events. Let's see what we got. Amazing. Don't be shy, folks. Any other questions? We're coming in early. Okay. Just a reminder, we have the governance call tomorrow. Um, so if you want to go for that, again, link tree is where you can find all of the links. Oh, I have a question in the Q&A. Another one for Teron. Continuing from Danilo's question, is CoinShift a plugin slash module on the safe contract? go back here. Oh, did he? I think we lost him. Hold on, let me see. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay, there we are. <laughs> yes. Uh, so we do we we are not any plugin or module on top of safe contracts we're just directly interacting with the base proxy factory contract right so uh, we can develop our own modules as well but right now we we just want to basically don't touch the security layer so yeah i think like we are directly interacting with the base layer no modules and plugins so you don't need to trust for the funds to coin shift basically gotcha okay all right, friends, any final questions? Going once, going twice. Put them in the chat. OK. Well, I will give you five minutes back, my friends. Um, big thank you to all of our speakers here, um, Andre, Jesse, um, Manu, for the demo. Really appreciate it. Taron, thank you so much for sharing um, what you're building at CoinShift. I'm super excited. Um, and yeah, again, you know where to follow us. Again, link tree here, it's in the chat. 
Um, yeah, and we just appreciate you all for coming out and, and showing up. Um, it means a lot. And again, I'll be posting the recording of this and the notes since a last community member said notes needed. So we heard you and we will be iterating on that. So um, again, big thanks to everyone. And um, yeah, take care and have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, day.